long as kids have loved toys, kids have loved big toys. Barbie had her dream house, G.I. Joe had that massive aircraft carrier thing, Lego Darth Vader had his various Star Wars Lego set Death Stars. <laughs> Every toy line needs its showstopper centerpiece, right? More big equals more fun. That's just maths. There's an uncomplicated and undeniable power in a toy or a playset so massive it transforms your whole room into a fantasy world of play. So when it comes to my comfort zone, Transformers, Who's the biggest? Who should be the biggest? For the longest time, so-called city formers dominated the landscape. From 1987's two-foot-tall Fortress Maximus to the latter-day influx of the Titan class. But doesn't it feel like something's missing? Something more cosmic? More infinite? A certain monster planet of awesome size that consumes all in its path, whose glacial but inevitable approach took almost 35 years to achieve its full scope. Just long enough for those same kids to grow into saggy old weirdos with enough disposable income to commercially justify an action figure with the diameter of a Range Rover wheel. My name's Hugh, and this is the story of the biggest Transformer toy that ever existed. Welcome to Hugh's Big Unicron Review. Or Funicron's Unicron Reviewnicron. Which incidentally is what? Sponsored by TF Nation! Yes indeed, Europe's biggest dedicated Transformers convention is coming! August 11th to 13th at the Birmingham NEC Hilton Metropole with an unbelievable dealer hall and an absolutely stacked guest roster. Check this out, we got David Sobolov, the voice of Blitzwing and Battletrap and Aplink. Andy Cousins, the lead 90s G1 Euro toy designer. Brilliant. Cyberverse alumni, May Cat and Jeremy Levy. IDW megastars, James Roberts, Nick Roach, Ed Perry, Jack Lawrence, and the first UK convention appearance anywhere ever of Susan Bluesen. Susan Blue, it's RC. Actual RC. Can't wait. All that, plus way more artists, and Jim the Knowledge Sorensen, and a Saturday night music show from the mighty pipes of Jehan. So get in here and bathe in Transformery bliss at the coolest show with the chillest team. I'll be there, just vibing, if that swings it. Tickets are available at tfnation.com. Check it out, and maybe I'll see you in August. Let's party, yeah? TF Nation! So the story of our favourite universal dominator begins as bombastically as possible with the 1986 cinematic flop Transformers the Movie, which introduced the fearsome The Entity, I mean Ingestor, I mean Unicron, as a mysterious cannibal planet whose sheer overwhelming enormity dwarfed the petty squabbles of the Autobots and Decepticons, an abomination of annihilation cruising through the cosmos, devouring worlds and casually eradicating whole societies, not fueled by spy or ambition, but seemingly by its own biological requirements. A girl's got to eat. Unicron is not so much a villain as it is an embodiment of the concept of entropy. An unknowable, irresistible force that can never truly die and will always return in some form to manipulate the desperate and bring all to despair. So naturally, our collective response was, hmm, what if I could buy that? Because regardless of what it represents, irrespective of the rock bottom esteem its own voice performer held it in, Unicron is a cool robot. And we love those. But sadly, no toys of big Vorsen and Wells were forthcoming from Hasbro, aside from a few janky prototypes of this incredibly charming pastel pumpkin thing, leaving the movie's tie-in toy line palpably incomplete and a thousand would-be buyers narky and unsatisfied. How appropriate then that it was a massive blue ball. And this way it would remain throughout the 80s and 90s. They even protoed and yeeted a second Unicron design for the Beast era, which made for almost two entire miserable unicronless decades, while the biggest toy ever spot was still occupied by big boring blokes like Fortress Maximus and repaints of Fortress Maximus. Fast forward with me now to the angst ridden year of our lord 2003, the second year of Transformers Armada and the inception of a protracted comeback for our galactic gormon that was so grandiose they eventually named a trilogy after him. <laughs> Give it up, if you will, for Transformers Armada Supreme Class Unicron. <laughs> 
Welcome back to the channel, my old friend. So this bespiked bastard head was naturally the centerpiece of the Armada toy shelf, and my god, did it know it. Because we're already talking about a line chock full of chonkers, so Unicron just had to be the hunkinest lunk of funksome chunk. Because you don't do Unicron as a side hustle, do you? It's got to be thing of the season. There was a whole new generation of kids to wow, and they knew the old school fans would be peeking in for that retroactive wish fulfillment, so they said, let's give them a show. Check out this demonic dickhead, like a bright orange butternut Satan. All horns and spikes and pointy poulains. This thing is an absolute riot. It is definitely still the classic 86 Unicron in all his entropic illustriousness, but filtered through a kick-ass fun-first philosophy, with so many of his hallmarks frivolously featured in an imposing but slightly daft way. Like this intense deep dive detail and circular motifs carved into cartoonish clear plastic for some reason. Well, look at the silly see-through six-pack down here. Dude is absolutely cut. And like, you can also open up the whole tub and stash a minicon in there. Oh, oh, oh no, he got eight. Oh no, oh bugger. Uh. Okay, I mean, what does that accomplish? What does it mean? Does it matter? No. Shut your face and shove a minicon in his knee. Just fill up his forearms. Load him up, man. Stick one on his shin and crank out three missiles at once. <laughs> Bang one into his back and launch that expanding mechanical chest missile. Wow, it really just blasts his entire heart at you. So emo. So 2003. Add all that to flashing red evil eyes and a bewilderingly brilliant glowy hand. And this is an absurdly entertaining thing. A borderline ambulatory playset loaded with destructive delight. It's just still so cool, man. It's friggin' 20 years old and it still feels so fresh and vital. The plastic feels great. Right? The motion is so smooth and strong, like it'll never let you down. And like, the size of this celestial sucker is basically bang on. This is the peak of Supreme Class for me. It's definitely the most compelling toy out of the trilogy's bigger books. Perhaps not as refined a piece as Primus was, but certainly more bodacious. And its healthy heft makes it a total two-hander, but let's not get it twisted. In terms of sheer mass, he's got nothing on the big city boys. Doesn't Supreme Class look so quaint now? in the age of the titans, but at the time, that didn't matter. It was, and remains, a big impressive toy among big impressive toys, sitting right at the upper limit of where big becomes unwieldy. This is as huge as it gets without being a pain in the arse. Foreshadow, foreshadow. <laughs> is a transformation that I'm not sure if I need to describe. It both functions and feels exactly how you think it does. It sort of wraps itself up in its own limbs and then encases itself in these removable hemispheres, which honestly, I don't mind parts forming anymore. Sometimes you gotta do it. And it all happens with an extremely armada action. All big loud joints and reassuring cushiony clunks that feel both high impact and indestructible. And the planet mode is barely a sphere, man. More of a semi-cube, a demi-dodecahedron, but it's 100% banger and still all about the play patterns. With the iconic gnashy gob horns mounted on a silly translucent shell, rocket pods ready to rock, and most of the robot just openly visible on the back. I'm so beyond minding this. It's just funny. I like that you can see the feet and the legs and where the arms go and the whole taint. I think it's because it reminds me of that classic 1986 transformation sequence. I look at it and I can see the whole thing playing out in my mind. And as a bonus, it gives you a convenient flat surface so you can pop it down somewhere without it rolling off like Crash Bandicoot. Gotta shout out the vertical Uranus ring there. Packing enough ports to stash up to 24 minicons, which in an unusual move doesn't activate anything, doesn't make anything happen, it's just storage. It doesn't even look cool. It fulfills no function, looks dumb, achieves nothing, doesn't need to exist. This is normally where I'd be like, same, but we're not doing that today. I'm gorgeous and I rule. But like, they had to do something with minicons, right? They were, after all, the central conceit of the whole Armada experience. So this is a fun way to acknowledge and incorporate the unifying minicon phenomenon. 
and why not? Why wouldn't they? Speaking of, actually, let's check in on Dead End there. There's a very fun little mini cron salacious crumb critter. There we go, mate. It's, a, it's actually a really nice take on the man made of shape archetype. It's rounder than Unicron. Boasting a very tidy puzzle toy transformation into the rare alt mode of Moon with Gun. He's even got his own specialized dimple there so he can sit above the gob and flip off the cosmos. Or just sit on the robo mode shoulder like a little predator shoulder cannon. Just a lovely little fun sized Death Star. I'm gonna call him Moonicron. So, as Unicron's first true appearance in plastic, this is precisely the toy it needed to be. Armada Unicron was a cultural reset for Transformers. It changed the game, man. Changed the whole landscape. I think timeless is a strong word, but it was great then and it's great now. Just maybe not for the same reasons. Problem was, like all magnum opuses, they had to follow it up. So, the following year for Transformers Energon, they just banged it out again in Cybergoth Black and Neon Greon. Which does look kind of sick, actually, but I ain't got it. So pretty much just take this one, bang on some skinny puppy. That's basically the vibe. But that was the last we saw of traditional Unicron, as it were, for a long time. Well, I'm not sure if it was deemed impractical or unfeasible or just plain cheeky to crank out a third smashed bowling ball. But whatever happened, we now enter the experimental limbo period of semi-successful weirdo Unicron redesigns. <laughs> Take, for example, Transformers Cybertron Deluxe Class Unicron, which reimagines the planet gorging peril as a sort of emissary of himself. Well, I'm not sure what the story is here. I think he was like reincarnated by himself into a smaller version of himself. I don't know. It's definitely a weird one. It does look sort of dope, like a skeletal samurai crab tank thing with a killer Nashi Hellraiser face sculpt and immense light piping. Definitely dig some of these weapons, like the planet key activated fake out mouth cannon, the little shoulder gun, the other more bigger gun, and these four serrated sword things that form like dual wield lobster pincers. That's great. Love that he's carried over the armada shoulder semicircles and all. That's coordination. That's continuity. That's class. Do you remember when I reviewed Cybertron Megatron and I'm like, why does he look like that? Because he's wearing Unicron's jumper, stupid. But taken on its own merits, this thing really ain't that good. It's kind of clumsy and over-designed and horribly awkward. It's at once too cluttered and too sparse. Its waist and hips weak and exposed, while the torso chunk is simply a huge static Meccano slab, overloaded with techno crap and these huge gobbly wheels drooping off his butt. There's just so much going on and he carries it all so weirdly. I just feel like this toy only gets a pass because it parrots Unicron's design features and coasts by on inherited clout. Like, if this was any other character, would anyone like it? If it was some rando troop like Blast Charge or Tank Wave, would it have got away with being this mid? Does it even work as Unicron? Not really, mate. <laughs> is actually kind of neat though. It's really fun how the waist joint and the shoulders kind of two-step around each other and when it all finally lines up, mm, delicious. And I'm honestly a little bit in love with this compact crab tank thing. Well, it's obviously a hell of a downgrade from a whole ass planet, but it's a fun example of the daft cartoony side of Transformers. Very sort of Scourge Cyclonus vibes, like a ground-based tank drone space whatever thingy. It's all orange expanses and saw blade spikes and spooky roundy bits in true Unicron style. Love this little chain of circles formed by the fake out mouth and the central pulpit and the little Lego ray our dish. Pretty cosmic, man. And honestly, the big gobbly wheels and the cannon really pay off back there, giving him a sort of monster mind crustacean energy. Crustacean energy. Oh no. Like it starts off all mechanical at the back and then gradually gets more organic towards the front, crescendoing in this strange uncanny insect face and horrible mantoid mandibles. Everything becomes crab. So yeah, it's a weird one. I feel like teen years for you would have loved it. Like what if Unicron was a samurai bug monster that was all twisted and dark and twisted? I guess it's neat that there's a legit Unicron toy that was probably a tenor. <laughs> And still, it looks downright sensible next to Transformers Prime Gaia Unicron, which has got to be the most bonkers take on an already very bonkers character. So, Transformers Prime's lore lent very heavily into the ethereal cosmic space fantasy side of things, and God, 
I just cannot stand it. Like, this is where I check out of every Chris McFeely video. I just can't hear the term aligned continuity and mentally remain in the room. I find it intolerably dull and fake deep, and my brain just can't accept it. The whole 13 primes thing, don't care, didn't ask. Unicron being the Earth in disguise, absolutely not. L ratio. So this asymmetrical aberration is in fact an avatar of Unicron. Soilborn en masse at whim so that there can be a scene where Optimus fights 30 of it. And manifested here as a ramshackle calcified tree of a thing. All twisted branches and wispy limbs. And yes, we have covered this before on the channel, but it was a Halloween video. I had a mask on. I was doing a zombie voice. It's borderline unwatchable. We'll call this a redunicron. This robot mode is a f mess and it does not get better. Look at this bloody thing. The proportions are all janked out. Hello? That's never happened before. Oh god, I hate it. What a bag of shit. Where were we? Oh yeah, janked out proportions. Check out this weirdly small and weirdly weird body. And this paltry pathetic head with like a scrunched semi-face and implied eyes. Implies. It does have something of a Dark Souls boss to it, but not a good one. Meanwhile, the limbs are hideous enormous and horribly balanced. Legs are nothing but shin with dumbass double hooves and bonus ghost Pokemon kneecaps. And the arms are some of the dumbest shit ever, with these elegant vacuum foiled shoulders descending into a crystalline earwax clump. Oh my god. <laughs> and this silly detachable bogey picker thing that turns into a hedgehog? What? Gaia Unicron is a very weird toy. I guess I do almost enjoy the enormous shoulder horns with accompanying haunted drapes. And I love that they snuck in the signature tuned up tum. It's got his own face on his back. Can that be the front? That's loads better. You'd barely notice. <laughs> See, that's the best thing I've ever seen it do, and that's not even a real mode. I guess it is a solid enough toy of what those Avatar guys look like, but you gotta wonder why they look like that. Like, which came first, the toy or the CG screen model? Because neither design is satisfying, and it all feels so compromised. It's like specialized to suck at everything. Nothing it can do is worth any of it looking as bad as it does. I will not say it. I'm not doing same. I'm not doing that today. I'm stunning. Transformation's a dangly disaster of barely locking tabs and guesswork that spread Eagles' his raggedy ass into an object that I can only describe as... This? I guess it's ostensibly a space cruiser or some kind of mound. I don't know. Nobody knows. What this is, is the ultimate cop-out alt mode. Because it had to transform into something. Oh, Refractor, I take it all back, buddy. You're fine. This is the epitome of space whatever. And not in a cute way. Like the Cybertron toys are space whatever, but in a cheeky knockabout Saturday morning cartoon kind of way. But this is a space whatever in an upsetting esoteric kind of way that gives me anxiety. Just a strange, vague shape made out of bits of an already strange, vague robot with all roots and bones and cobwebs and Halloween bullshit hanging off it and its own face on top, like the world's shittest headmaster. And that part was at least kind of fun at the time because we could speculate. What if there was a body you could put it on? Imagine how big that would have to be, whoa! But there is one now. We can do that now. And it just looks like bro needs a haircut. And the reason this toy is the way it is, the reason both the robot and the alt mode look the way they do, is because the toy is apparently primarily built to be a suit of abyssal power armor for either Optimus or Megatron. And I'm not sure if I've just got the wrong toys or whatever, but I can't hook that up. It just dangles off them both like a pointy poncho. But like maybe it has to be the Arms Micron version. I don't know. And the fact that I don't know isn't exactly a point in its favor. What am I supposed to get out of this? Like, I get why they would want to do a toy of Unicron for Prime, but I don't get why they'd do it this way. I do respect that they tried something. We appreciate the innovation. But this is bad. Nah, this one ain't working. Dump it. I just prefer Unicron when he's a big horrible thing in the distance that's gonna get you eventually. Not you specifically. You don't register. Just gotta get something. And if that's you, then that's too bad. Like, how scary is that? And how simple is that? How easy to understand is the threat of a planet that's gonna eat you? But this one says, what if Unicron was under our feet the whole time? And that's interesting, but like... 
How's that gonna work? Why haven't we noticed until now? How are you gonna do a toy of that? Too many questions, and if this is the answer, I ain't asking. But by now we were well into the 2010s, which heralded the dawn of the Titan class. A whole new wave of 20 plus inch toys that honestly did very little for me personally. Because they're mostly just big rectangle dudes that turn into a building. And it's very difficult to have your mind blown by something when they give us a new one every year. But that's a different video. Point is, both the concept and character of Unicron are so overwhelmingly vast and so well established that it really sucked to see it relegated to these weirdo outlier figures and same old, same old Supreme class reissues. While the status of biggest toy ever was still being passed between the same two or three tedious tower block townies. But it did kind of feel like they were building to something. Because even this entire new big bot category still wasn't big enough. Unicron needed more massiveness, more spotlight, more money. Here we go, we're doing it. Ugh. Oh. Yeah? <laughs> you don't want to know how much time has elapsed between those two cuts. Yes, mate, at long last, Big Val Dunacron would arrive in all its glossy grandeur in the form of Transformers War for Cybertron Unicron, which came into being through the proprietary Hasbro crowdfunding platform HasLab. And after numerous deadline extensions, a huge PR push, and an eye-watering price tag, the the biggest Transformer toy of all time finally became a reality in 2021, and let me tell you, things have not been the same. God, look at this bloody thing, makes an absolute mockery of my whole setup. I barely know how to live with this thing, let alone work with it. So, first of all, we have to say, HasLab Unicron is a little bit stunning. Standing 27 inches tall and roughly as wide, weighing in at over a stone, it's just so much more vast and dense than anything in the whole retail category, both in physical and metaphorical way. We'll get there. It's just so wild to me that this was technically in the same toy line as like, Red Alert. It does blow me away a little bit. So visually, Unicron simply steamrolls in like a bullheaded blitzkrieg of bravado, boasting the heftiest bod block you've ever seen in your life. With these enormous angular pecs, multi-tiered midriff, and stunning sunburnt octo abs. Love these deep set circular swooshes, like bro's been shrugging off planetary collisions since us lower protoplasm. Arms are also impressive, keeping the unhinged detail train going, with bonus spiked out wristbands like he's off to a mayhem show. Check out the hands, all bright and blocky, with literally the fiercest finger articulation I've ever seen. Those thumbs are nuts! And check out the wings, or like planetary rings? Rings? Blasted out of his shoulders and forming an eye-catching spiked out triple halo. It just highlights his already insane presence and leaves no head unturned. People will ask you about this. Legs are literally the most serious stompers of all time. Like independent mega city skyscrapers with these awesome viewing platform knees and tremendous demonic hook feet. And like it's down here that reality really starts to set in. Because as part of a collection, nothing comes close. Even Armada Unicron barely makes the waist. Most other toys don't even scrape the knees. Faces are- hold up. Uh the face is pretty cool, and it looks rad nestled among that douchey crescent moon collar. Love the horns, but like, the mouth bothers me. Well, I dig that the jaw hinges like that, but it just looks so aggressive with the teeth all bared. Petty side note, but it really bothers me that half the teeth are the wrong colour. What, was that not in the budget? Need some more bloody money? Piss off. But moreover, the expression doesn't suit him. He's just too menacing, too aggressive. Even fully closed, he's still doing a bit of a snarl, and he doesn't need to. It just doesn't feel very Unicron to me. The mouth should be like a staple. At worst, slightly pissed off or inconvenient but aloof, unbothered. I want Unicron to feel nothing, but instead I feel nothing. Cause here's where I'm at. As a toy, for me, this is the worst one, by a long way. Worse than Gaia, easily. Cause it's got basically no play value. It's no fun to mess with. It's inaccessibly massive and impractically weighty. It's a pain in the ass to handle and it feels weird to pose. Like if you're gonna try and do anything with it, you need that flight stand. And even when we're talking strictly visually, it really only maintains the illusion from the front. Cause look at this man, everything that isn't strictly robot is either crinkled up on his back or awkwardly clamming 
not the calves. Just no subtlety, man. No style. No riz. But perhaps more pressingly, it doesn't do anything. Zero play features. No rockets or secret stash pockets or even light piping. God, I miss that glowy hand. Look, man, Armada Unicron may be juvenile, but that guy can party. All you get with this nerd is collector-oriented swappable accessories. Oh boy, can't wait. What do we got here? I guess you can slap on this battle damage face panel to reenact the end of the movie, you know, when he got his ass kicked. Or you can have a go on these goofy action man shifty eyes. Oh no, I kind of like that. Uh, chin? Give him a new chin? that do anything for you? And all that's left is this pathetic see-through accessory stand with like a keychain toy of the Autobot shuttle, along with these insultingly tiny paint crumbs to represent Rodimus and Galvatron, which I appreciate are the closest we're gonna get to true scale, and I guess they had to be chompable, but come on! You call that added value? I'm gonna lose them. I'm gonna inhale them. All right, speaking of deep breaths, let's friggin' transform it, oh God. My planet was destroyed by Unicron. How dare Unicron! Then we've got to destroy Unicron. No, Unicron. And the answer is... Unicron! Unicron! Who's Unicron? I am Unicron. Oh, it's just layers and layers of folding and folding and folding. Where do these feet go? me! This isn't a transformer. This isn't a transformation. This is a lie. The surfaces don't translate. Do you understand me? None of this becomes anything. It all wraps up and folds away and is concealed. <sighs> Come on. Oh, this toy is giving me tennis elbow. How am I to apply enough pressure to make that- like, where do I push? Where do I push? Here? I can't. There's not enough space. I'm so sweaty now. How is this? How is this good? How the f can anyone like this? No, it's good. It's good. It's fine. It's good. It's good. It's a good toy. I love it. I love it, guys. I love it. Whoa, check it out. It's just f***ing flaps. It's not clever or interesting. It's not even fun. It's just difficult and unsatisfying. Where does this even go, man? It just tells you where to put it afterwards. But I don't know where it came from. <sighs> that stays, but this ain't plugged in. So why? Why does it work when it's not proper, but it doesn't when it is? I wanna uppercut this thing. I wanna yeet it out the fucking window. I'm so miserable right now. Just sweaty and pissed off, and I've been here all night. Ah, oh, you! Oh, fuck you and all. Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't even express how much I do detest this fucking toy. The transformation is absolutely punishing. It is labor. It takes like an hour and there's no fun bits. And like going into planet mode, the instructions are no help whatsoever. It helps you set him up and get the rings on and get him out of the box and into robot mode. But after that, you're on your own. I had to get Emgo up and do it that way. And it barely resembles what happens in the film. I don't know if that's a factor. It isn't usually, but I feel like it should be here. That is in the truest sense, an iconic moment. And definitely the classic Unicron moment, right? Pretty much the only thing it does do is the arms fold out, sleeves slide back moment. Big shiny ab reveal? Forget it. Ominous emerging head moment? Huge nope. And the body, that whole chunk, does nothing. Nothing. Cause oh, imagine how much work it would be to produce a toy that could actually follow what happened on screen. Imagine how much that would cost. Mother do you know how much this cost? Didn't I just blow two months bills and food budget on this cumbersome calamity? It takes the piss, mate. To be fair though, planet mode is impressive. <laughs> 
feel like this is the primary mode, right? It's so much cleaner and more accomplished than the robot. It's just a medicine ball of malignance, emphasized by the vertical ring structure zeroing in like a thorny crosshairs. Once again, we are not shy on the detail. It's insanely involved on there, copiously coated with a continent's worth of sculpted shapes, cheeky sunken circles, and metallic polar regions. Definitely enjoy the malleable cheesy fry asteroid belt. And the moving mouth parts are outrageous. Mouthrageous. Love the enormous mandible hands. Handables. Handable lector. <laughs> and the rotatey gob action opening like rancid petals. Not sure if it's quite the right colours. It did look different on the promo renders, but I don't think I mind it. And check out the cartoon gob chompers on the inside. Nothing like watching the end of a civilization to Looney Tunes sound effects. But the problem is, that's all I have to say about it. That's all my notes. Is that all it's gonna give me? Good looks, colossal size, one play feature, and a friggin' existential crisis every time I look at it? It made me question my whole life, not just as a collector, but as a person. Like, what am I doing? Is this who I am? Because I like to think that I don't take collecting too seriously. But don't I, though? Unicron has made me ask myself a lot of... Difficult, important questions. It feels less like a fun robot to enjoy and more like a questionable life choice. Cause it's so big and so demanding. At best, it's a home decor conversation starter. And even then, only with the right type of visitors. If you got other nerds in your life, they'll go, wow, that's cool for a minute, but it's only a matter of time before the conversation descends into, hmm, that's the life you chose, is it? Cause like between the toy and the box it came in, that's the footprint of a fridge freezer or a new oven or both at about, just about the same cost. I didn't think it'd actually occupy so much of my living space and make me question every decision that led me to it. Like we know Unicron is the devourer of life, but I didn't think it'd be this literal. Buying a toy shouldn't make me feel shitty about buying a toy. This, just like the Robosun Optimus Prime, is all about the instant wow factor. Look at this. Share it online, take a picture, post a reaction, give it a week and a half, and it's like, why the f hell have I bought this? <sighs> Look, man, I think my main problem is that Unicron was such a high profile release, and yet it's such a terrible example of the experience of Transformers. It was a pop culture event, memorabilia to generate buzz and rope in the broader audience and make everybody think that the Transformers brand is cool and important. This is what people who don't know Transformers think Transformers fans must like. But there's almost nothing I like about Transformers that transfers to this thing. There's no ingenuity in the design. There's no interest. So precious little fun to be had. This is the least I've ever been entertained by a toy. The transformation is an ordeal I never want to go through again. It fights me at every turn. It's a problem to store. It's a nightmare to move. And all the while it's so convinced of its own importance. It must be good because it was expensive. No, it's a cynical, flashy, showboaty, clickbait monstrosity is what it is. It's a manifestation of the obscenity of excess. This toy is a rude prick. Uh, like, it's not even a good example of HasLab. I swear it took 10 deadline extensions to get the bloody thing made, right? Meanwhile, Victory Saber is a wonderful set. The play value, the fun factor, the sheer beauty of that thing far outshines this massive bag of bollocks. It's not fun or clever or cool. It's just big. It's bigger than Fortress Maximus, who cares? It doesn't change the game, it breaks the game. Cause what now? What could be bigger and more impressive than Unicron? Would it even be good? I got no faith in that. It's too much, it's too big to enjoy. It makes me pine for the days when my biggest Transformer was G2 Megatron. And I'm not loving this, you know? I don't enjoy being performatively miserable about nice things. That's not the kind of online guy I'm trying to be. <laughs> I like to be positive, but I cannot. It's hideous. It just kills me that something that I thought would be nice to own has ended up being such a disruption in my entire life. Kind of makes a guy wonder, What's it all about? If this didn't fill the gap, what will? We've gone as big as we can go and only found misery. So where do we go from here? Back 
to the top of the show, apparently, because in astonishing scenes, 2023 saw the shock return of that preposterous prototype thing from notorious Tatmonger's Super 7. <laughs> yes, mate, as a surprise oversize addition to the TF chunk of their years long run of basically useless reaction figures, the Super 7 team somehow wrangled the rights to release the first ever mass market interpretation of the unfinished G1 Unicron toy, and isn't that so poetic somehow? Reaction figures are, broadly speaking, some of my least favourite shit. These are toys for people who can't be asked with toys. Just worthless, Funko Pop adjacent, cut and paste template trash with no real value of their own, catering solely to brand recognition and nostalgia, and honestly, it's kind of perfect. I mean, for me, after the absolute life quake brought on by the multiple Hundo Haslab debacle, this little moon base munchin mama is so refreshing. Because it knows what it is! It's a representation of the character. Or in this case, the toy that recognizes and accepts the impracticalities of full scale production that Haslab tried so hard to overcome. Unicron's always going to be out of scale. So why try? Why engage with that struggle? Why not bypass it? Reaction Unicron sheds all the bullshit, shuns all the expectations and pomp, and just gives you a nice, silly, vinyl action figure. Just a desirably deskable Dr. Robotnik death egg robot with daft tummy rubby action and silly kicky legs. It's wild the amount of joy and relief that this stupid little bauble sparks in me. This is an avatar of acquiescence. An echo of a future that never was. A souvenir of the 1980s Unicron dream that neither time nor plastic could capture. This is acceptance. This is peace. And it's also kind of a shitty toy. So, what have we learned? Is there any takeaway from this other than big toy bad amino like? To think so. How about this? Um, the innate desire for bigger and flashier can only ever end in disappointment. Is that anything? Cause bigger and flashier ain't me. That's not what I value. Maybe sheer brute size works for you, and great if it does. But for me, the emotional gulf between what I thought I'd love and what I expected to hate, and the disparity between the reactions I expected and what actually happened, is proof enough that sometimes the imagined ideal is more satisfying than the reveal. And sometimes the wildest playroom fantasies of your inner five-year-old are just incompatible with the realities of adult life. And I should probably lay off falling for these big ticket hype factory items. I know I'm not gonna like them. And I try to like them, and they end up eating months of my time. Remember Robosun? Look man, I gotta go. I'm moving out of here like tomorrow. So thank you so much for watching. I've been Thew, and from Toy Grind HQ Derby, for the final time, stay true Necron. I'm not kidding, I gotta I gotta get packing. This is no joke. Oh by the way, the beard, that was an accident. I took a huge chunk out of it with the thingy and I had to just keep going until this was all that's left. <laughs> Welcome back to 2010! Huge thank you to everybody for watching, massive cheers to the uh, Patreon squad. Special shout outs today to Ted Simon! Party on my friend! Right, last one to leave, turn the lights off, yeah? See you later! Be sure to subscribe for more Theo's Awesome Transformers reviews. Limited appeal, keeping it real.